Uh, hello, uh, I'm Dan Lando. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at Well Cornell uh, Medical College and a core member of the New York Genome Center, both in New York City. Um, and I am participating here at this ESH meeting. Um, uh, and I talked uh, today about uh, our work developing genomic tools uh, specifically focused on chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Uh, the lab focuses on integrating um, technology development in terms of new molecular biology tools, uh, new uh, biocomputation, and delivering insights into the fundamental principles of cancer evolution. Um, this is uh, driven by the understanding that cancer evolution is a significant obstacle to cure, both in chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, and more broadly in cancer. This is because the diversity, genetic and otherwise, that is represented in tumors uh, poses a significant challenge uh, to therapeutic approaches. Uh, whereas uh, our therapies are challenged to uh, deal not with one um, uh, entity of the disease, but rather with thousands of variation of this disease within each individual patient and the selection uh, that is afforded by this diversity to enable leukemias and lymphomas to find evolutionary trajectories to overcome therapeutic challenges. The work we have done uh, looked at both genetic features that guide this diversity. Uh, we have uh, profiled uh, um, uh, intra-leukemic, intra-tumoral uh, uh, diversity, genetic diversity with different tools. Uh, either with whole exome sequencing or targeted sequencing, uh, developing analytical deconvolution methods to infer the genetic diversity within these leukemias. Uh, we have shown that genetic diversity in leukemia and CLL is uh, uh, one of the hallmarks of this disease, and that looking at pretreatment diversity can help predict both the clinical outcome and the future evolutionary outcome of the disease. Uh, we've shown that uh, clonal evolution with therapy is the rule rather than the exception, um, and it, it's, it's found almost uniformly in relapse uh, CLL. These methods that are coupled now with a dense serial sampling of leukemias that are being treated uh, allows us to integrate uh, these next generation sequencing data with mathematical modeling to infer clone-specific fitness. That means that within individual patient, we can look at CLL cells that have a mutation versus CLL cells that are wild type for that individual mutation, and then compare the clone-specific fitness that is added to the cell with this mutation. Um, that's a significant advantage because, because those cells are coming from the same individual, from the same leukemia, they share all other features that could be potential confounders, the germline background, the preceding genetic background, the uh, microenvironmental, the uh, pharmacodynamics, the compliance, all of those features are shared between two clones that are found residing within the same individual. Now, by doing this serially, we can do uh, uh, fitness in a context-specific manner. So what is the differential fitness due to a particular mutation with drug A versus drug B, for example? And the hope is to be able to use this quantitative information to be able to ad algorithmically derive ways of optimally combining drug A and drug B. For example, in many clinical uh, trials, we give six cycles of drugs. Why six and not five or seven and so forth? The idea is, again, that by having the ability to optimize it directly based on patient measure measurements, uh, we can uh, uh, use closed-loop optimization systems to optimize combination therapy. So that's the genetic part of the work. Uh, we also have significant interest in non-genetic mechanisms of evolution. Uh, we know that, and we reported this, that um, these leukemia diversified not only through the process of somatic, ongoing somatic mutations, but also through the process of ongoing somatic epimutation, or stochastic changes, heritable changes in their epigenomes. Uh, increasing the phenotypic diversity of leukemia and allowing the leukemia to more efficiently explore the fitness landscape for superior evolutionary uh, trajectories. And in this uh, meeting, I described some of our recent data using 
novel analytics uh, to uh, study how this affects the level of coordination between different epigenetic layers, showing that there is corrupted coordination uh, between different epigenetic layers, enforcing epigenetic plasticity in CLL. Uh, and further, I describe uh, novel methods using multi-omics single-cell sequencing technologies. Single-cell sequ sequencing technologies that allow us to uh, uh, obtain from the same individual cells multiple layers of information, including the epigenome or the methylome, the whole transcriptome, and genotyping information for driver mutations, and how we can use this integrated perspective into the at atomic unit of the evolutionary process, the single cell, to study how all of these heritable features are being propagated and fuel the evolutionary process. We invite you to join the conversation and connect with your peers on the ESH uh, Twitter has hashtag, and thank you for your attention.